skit. I'm not going to do the skit. I'm going to show the skit. Come on, don't you I, I would do the skit. We're going to make a little practice if we did it. But, but it, just, let's just watch this and find it touching and amusing. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship, that we're in essence his masterpiece. I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, I don't see a masterpiece, you know? I mean, maybe a, a Picasso, you know? But I wanna be a masterpiece. I wanna be everything that God has created me to be. And so I go to him in prayer and I say, God, do whatever it takes to, to get things out of my life that don't need to be there Mold me into the image of your son so that I can be your masterpiece. Hi. Whoa. Who are you? I'm God. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, yeah, you just said the prayer, so here I am. That's how it works. Oh, okay, okay. Um, if you're God, then make it snow in here. You no, know, if I made it snow in here, it'd get kind of yucky, and I really don't want to do that. See, you're not God. Why do you say that? God wouldn't say yucky. Yes, I do. It's a Greek word. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you're God, what does Lamentations 15:9 say? Lamentations is a very short book. It only has five chapters. Why is it so short? I was tired of lamenting. Oh. Yeah. Uh, if you're God, who's going to win the World Series this year? You know what? I'm not so much into playing games. Why are you so much into playing games? You are God. Well, gave it away. You answered my question with a question. I did. <laughs> yep, I do that, don't I? I did it again. <laughs> Step right up. Here we go. Okay. okay. All right. Hey. Yeah. Um, What's this about? These are the tools I'm going to use to make you into my original masterpiece. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Hang on. Yeah. I thought you were a carpenter. That's my son. Here we go. Step okay. right up. Here we go. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. How do you know what to chisel and what to leave? I take out all the things in your life that aren't out of me, kind of like dead weight. Ooh, speaking of that, could you chisel right in here? I just can't get rid of it. I mean, the other went away, but this, I mean, I've tried exercising, I've watched what I ate, I even did Pilates for a while, that was awkward. But if you could chisel, All I mean, right. Can I talk or can I chisel? Talk, chisel, talk, chisel. No, talk, no, no, chisel. no, chisel. All right, most of my children just like to talk. Not me. Bring on the chisel. Here we go. All right. You have a lot of anger. Ow. Some pride. Ow. Compare yourself to others instead of me. Ow! You're lazy, <clears throat> but you pretend like you're really, really busy. You have a problem with lust? No, okay, <laughs> time out. <laughs> I do not have a problem with lust. You don't have a problem with lust? No, I can do it anytime I want. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, maybe, maybe we can take a little time out. I mean, I think I'm doing pretty good. You are doing good, but when you look in the mirror, who do you see? I see me. Okay, then I need to keep chiseling away because ultimately you and others need to see my son. Here we go. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, don't take this the wrong way. It's just that when I start looking more like your son, um, people get uncomfortable around me, you know? I mean, even my friends at church, they're all like, oh, you're holier than thou. Why would you do that, you know? I mean, so what you're doing right now is you'd rather play God in certain areas of your life than for me to be God over your whole life. I did not say that. That's what you meant. Yes, it is. It's hard to talk to you. I mean, you know everything I'm thinking. I'm just saying, you've done good work. Maybe we take a little break, a little time out, then we'll come back to right. it. What you're doing right now is so common. What you're doing right now is called control. Do you want to control things in your life, or can I chisel? Control, chisel, control. No, no, chisel. chisel. Here we go. No, can, can we chisel where I want that? It's called control. Okay. You've been holding on to this for a long time. You ready for this? This hurts me more than it hurts you. Ow! I don't think you understand this pain. Don't talk to me about pain. I know all about pain. I sent my son to die on the cross for pain, for sin, but I also did it for another reason, to give you freedom. Do you know what insanity is? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. And there are the things in your life, you even think back to high school that you've been doing that do not work in your life, but you go to these empty wells whenever you're hurting, whenever you're angry, whenever you're lonely and tired, but they do not work. No, no, okay, okay. Um, I'm thinking maybe your we could- not my thoughts. Oh, okay, but if we went another way- Your we ways could... are not my ways. Okay, well look, I can't be good. You can't be good. I've made you good. Be good. Uh, what? Nothing. 
What is it? That you wouldn't understand. I, God of all the universe, wouldn't understand something one of my children has to say. Try me. It's just, God, I've let you down so many times. No, you were never holding me up. I hold you up with my victorious, righteous right hand, and don't you forget that. In this relationship, I hold you up. Okay. Chisel away. All right. Just, just be prepared for what you're going to find in there, because I know who's inside there. Because God, I get up every morning and I look at him in the mirror, and it is this this scared little kid who gets up every day and tries to dress like an adult and act like an adult, but I can't. So just be prepared for what you're going to find in there. You have listened to so many voices for far too long that aren't out of me. You think you're junk, don't you? You really, really, really think you're junk. Listen to me. I don't make junk. What does that say about me? How can I show you that my love for you has no boundaries? I know. Reach in your back pocket. What? Reach in your back pocket. Why? Are you arguing with me? Reach in your back pocket. God. Yes? I was just saying, God, I'll do that right now. You were just saying my name in vain. You know what? It's, it's a name. It's a saying. It's, it's more it's... than a name. It's more than a saying. It's more than a bad habit. It's a name above all names. I want to teach you something about my name. Reach in your back pocket. You know what that is? This is a page from, from a journal I had when I was younger. How'd you get this? Hello? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, read it. I love Angie Holland. Other side. Sorry. I married her. I was there. Dear God, today I am turning everything over to you. I'm not going to hold on to anything anymore. Your word says that you will make me your masterpiece and use me to do great things. I don't see how that's possible, but I want that with all that I am. So please do whatever it takes to make me what you want. I love you, God. I love you too, Tommy. And I love you too much just to leave you where you're at. So this salvation that you hold, don't let it be some sentimental gush or some head knowledge. I want you to work it out in every detail of your life. And don't compare yourself to someone else because that is just trivial nonsense. You are my original masterpiece. You are one of my workmanship and you I find favor. This, don't look at this as a prison. But look at this as a, a father disciplines his child. A father disciplines the ones he loves. I know, but it's going to be tough. Yes, it'll be tough. But you bought into the lie thinking everything was going to be easy when you said yes to me. It's not how it works. I want you to do something. I want you to look out there and I want you to say, Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Tommy. No, 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 no. no. The way you see yourself or you yearn so much for others to see you the way I see you. Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Yes, you are. And so are you. God doesn't make junk. You are an original masterpiece. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Huh? Sometimes we need some chiseling. Who wants him to chisel? Come on. There's a lifetime of chiseling, but we can get more and more junk out, more and more truth in. Lies can be destroyed. Many years ago, my wife, Inc., she was here. Miss her. She died. She came to me, and I was her minister had no idea that I would be her husband, she would be my wife. 
but the, the Lord used me to help get her delivered and, and put her in a rent house I had and my, my brother in the other end of the house and I began to rehab them as he would show me what to do and to teach them and you know, um, one of the first things I, had, I taught her was to to learn what our, her identity was in the Lord, and to 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 learn to talk to the Lord and to to listen for Him and to journal what He would say to her and all of those things. And um, but one day we were praying for somebody else, and I had somebody come over, and I was going to pray for him, and she was in the room, and she said, "I, I the Lord told me to look this up. It was Jeremiah chapter one." And in Jeremiah chapter 1, it says to the Lord speaking to the young prophet Jeremiah, he says, I have appointed you a prophet unto the nations to tear down, to uproot, to dismantle, to rebuild, and to replant. Now, she wasn't a Bible scholar. She heard from the Lord, you understand. And she, that scripture immediately painted the picture of deliverance. Every one of us is a prophet under our own lives. And the words you have spoken, the words you will speak, or ultimately can put you. I'll use the microphone here. It will put us in a position. If I speak the proper words that agree with God, I can tear down, uproot, and dismantle lies of the devil. Those strongholds that we believe. Amen? And then we can speak words that rebuild and replant and bring life. And it's like that chiseling thing. What did he say? What do you do? What do you see when you look in the mirror? I mean, and he goes, Well, we need to keep chiseling. <laughs> right? It's really we want to be a reflection of our Lord in our own uniqueness. How many find it glorious? There's not one face that looks like in here. <laughs> huh? I mean, we could have a couple of twins that were identical and they'd be close, but there, but but even there, huh? There's not what if, humans are amazing. Huh? Well, what's even more amazing is who created us. Amen. If you're one of those persons, it's just like he said in that skit. You think you're you're not worthy. And some people, and listen to me, of ourselves, we're a mess. But if he chose us to be worthy to stretch and die for, who are we to reject what he's done? And who are we to hate what he loves so much? And that can be ourselves. And so that's not the body. What I'm going to teach about is a totally different subject but i want you all to close your eyes and i want you to start and if there's any and some of you have done all this but how many know there's little foxes sometimes things that have been hidden so you close your eyes and then repeat after me say lord show me everything i need to forgive myself for now, whatever he shows you, you take make it first person and you say, like, if it was me, I'd say, Randy, I forgive you for that. Randy, I forgive you for this. I forgive you for all the things you and make it whatever the Lord brings you that you need to forgive you for. Make it like you're sitting right across from you and you're looking you in the eye and you're talking to you and you're telling you that I forgive you. And take a few moments to do that before we ever start.
Yes, you will. Say, Lord, whatever I need to see, I want to see. Be real. Take a deep breath. Come on, just listen. Listen to me, sons and daughters, daughters and sons. A lot of times this is in your subconscious. It means you don't go over that. Now listen, there are some, it's up on the surface. They look in the mirror and they despise what they see. And yet you're fearfully and wonderfully made. So if you're despising what you see, you've received a big, big lie. But then... And, and and then there are people that literally, I hate me. I'm stupid. You've spoken those words, repent. You put a label on yourself. Sometimes those labels you put on you are because somebody else put it on you too. We forgive them. Amen. The label that God puts on you is child, mine, apple of his eye. Precious one. That's his label. All those other labels are lies. There are some that have it on the surface, but for most people, that self-hatred, that self-condemnation, all that stuff is subconscious. And it's there under the surface, and it gets triggered when somebody else opposes you and says something ugly, and you get feelings that are unhealthy. Come on, let's let it go tonight. Huh? Let's let it go tonight. Let's 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 let God's love come in. The Father's love pour in. Let's let his love pour in. And let's decide that we're gonna enjoy life and enjoy God and enjoy being me. Say, Lord, help me to enjoy being who you've made me to be. And Lord, if I'm off, if I'm off track anywhere from what I inherited, what was imparted to me by other people's sin against me, or by my own waywardness, today I want to renew all. I I actually want to become new, to become what you always wanted for me. So I receive it, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Now we're going to, you know, this is where we're going. So say, Lord, I'm asking you to show me any place in my life where I have a conflict with myself over any conflict I had, even with anybody else. And then listen. Close your eyes, and when he shows you, listen, when he shows you, or you may already know, or you hear, you take your one hand and you chop it in the other, and if it's one or 50, say, I break that. I break that. And you're breaking the power of the enemy and his hold off of your life, and you're breaking soul ties with somebody, and you're also pulling yourself and breaking yourself away from those places and those homes and the business and wherever there was a failure you're literally your feet are coming out of the grave i break that so do it if the lord shows you please thank you lord thank you lord just say i break it all those things i spoke will come to pass by faith in what the lord will do Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Nothing hidden. Every work of the enemy exposed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Everybody just take a deep breath and let all that stuff go. All that poison, all that venom, all of that from the snake bites. Come on, go, 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 go. Cleanse them, Lord, spirit, soul, and body. Say, Lord, I bless my human spirit in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for healing my human spirit. Wherever it's been bruised, especially by hope deferred. Even as I breathe in the breath you've given, let your breath of life heal my spirit. Push out every dent. Heal the bruises. Take a deep breath. I speak to the human spirits and I agree with what they just said, Lord, that you would heal them. You would make them whole. You would strengthen them in the inner man. And I thank you for it, Lord, in Yeshua's holy name. Thank you, Father. Come on. All of those spirits, every spirit, demon that bruises the human spirit, let them go. Go, 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 go. In Yeshua's name, let them go. These are God's precious jewels. Let him go. Let him go. All those bewilderments and vexations. I break your power. Bewildered. Vexation. Come on. Let him go. Let him go. Loose them. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you kind of don't, don't. Let your arms go. Let your hands go. Put your feet on the ground. Be open. Don't be closed off. Don't let the enemy hold himself in. Come on, we're letting him go. Come on, the Lord's love. The Lord, listen, the Lord, let Father, I just thank you for putting your arms around your children and loving them, imparting perfect love that cast out fear now, Lord. Perfect love that cast out fear. Perfect love that cast out fear. Or you heal the brokenhearted. You bind the wounds. So I thank you, Lord, that broken heart, wounded heart, shattered heart has to go. Self-inflicted wounds. The demons that maintain them, you go. Thank you, Father. Say, Lord, I give you permission. To cleanse the neurons, the neurites in my brain, in my heart, in my bowels, to cleanse my kidneys of every spirit, demon, familiar spirit, unholy entity that's come in through bruised emotions, battered emotions, wounded emotions, damaged emotions, and every spirit that maintains those things has to go. I agree. They have to go. Take a deep breath. Let them go. Come on. Come on. Go, 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 go. Go. Bruising from father, bruising from mother, bruising from siblings, bruising from friends, bruising from self, bruising from husbands, bruising from mothers. Bruising, come on, bruising, bruising from wives. Come on, go, 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 go. Bruisings from church people. Come on, from, from clergy, from pastors, from prophets. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody should have been a friend, but they weren't. We break that. Come on, teachers, people in authority. We break your power. Come on, go, 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 go. Let them go. Say, Lord, I ask you to show me if there's any spirit that took on the name of any human being that I need to be freed from. Now, if the Lord shows you the name, you see the face, 
You speak the name under your breath and say, I command the spirit of and say the name to go. Just say the name and, then to, and we're telling it to go. And when I'm going to give you a moment. You could have five names. You could have one name. But if you have a name, if he gives you a name. There's a name above all names. It's above that name. And you spirits and you demons that took on the name of those people, especially you controllers, come up and come out now in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, in Jesus' holy name, come up and let them out. Go, 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 go. You who took on their father's name, you who took on their mother's name, you who took up their grandfathers, their grandmothers, their uncles, whatever name, get out. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Sons' names, daughters' names. Come on, get out of there. Let them go. Joy stealers, you that have caused a halt in God's peoples where they're stuck. We break that. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Who the Son sets free, who Yeshua sets free, is free indeed. Not by my father, not by power, but by your spirit, rock, the Holy Spirit of the living God. Do your work, Lord. Come on, do your work. Thank you, Lord. Only you can do this. Thank you, Father. Take one more deep breath. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, if I have resisted your spirit of adoption, I ask you to forgive me. Today, tonight, I want to fully receive your spirit of adoption that causes me to cry out. Abba, Father. Now take a deep breath and receive his adoption. You're adopted. Adopted people get chosen. <laughs> They're chosen. Nobody is ever adopted without being chosen on purpose. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the adoption, the promise. The promise of never rejecting your children. Amen. Come on, let him, let him have you. Come on, <laughs> let him have those places where the wounds have been. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take a deep breath. Come on. Come on. Let it go. Let it go. If you're fighting inside, say, Lord, I need you. Come on. He's the deliverer. He's the one that comes from Mount Zion. He's our deliverer. He's our champion. He's our king. He's a mighty, mighty warrior. And he'll fight every bit of darkness for you in a heartbeat, but you've got to decide to let him have it. You can't hold on to it. And even some of us that have been disappointed in family and things have to let him have it. And thrive for the ones around us while he's working on the ones away. Okay? Thrive for the ones around us. Knowing that we're accepted by him and not rejected. Take a breath. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, if there's any part of me that has shoved things down deep inside, so I wouldn't feel it. I'm ready to feel it and get healed. I don't want things stuffed anymore. I want them up and out. I want to be able to receive your love 
and give your love to others and to me. I want to have a life of holy fellowship, even with myself. I want to like me. See, there's a holy like in yourself. It's not puffed up and it's not prideful. It's giving yourself a brain. <laughs> Come on. We've got to give ourselves a brain sometimes. We'll need the Savior till we're glorified. And then we'll glorify him all of eternity for getting us through this thing. Amen. Amen. Take another deep breath. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen. Sometimes we clear a bunch of clutter so that we can receive the love of God. And sometimes we get some, uh, clear some things out or we, we, we work on that relationship with God so we can go clear clutter. <laughs> hmm? Clutter. Junk stuff okay say lord thank you for being you <laughs> and choosing me hallelujah bless them lord i'm just gonna say bless them we went down a road i didn't know we were going but he wanted to huh we need to be healed you know say lord Chisel me anytime you want to. <laughs> Amen. Even if it hurts, Lord, because <laughs> it's for my best. Amen. Amen. All right, sister, can you pull me first? You know where it is? Is that exception? There we go. We're going to talk about great deceptions tonight. Occultism, entertainment, tattoos, essential oils. There's many more. This is a few. And we're going to begin with witchcraft. Next slide, please. Sir. The practices of witches, sorcery, enchantments. And this is Webster's in lit intercourse with the devil. Interesting choice of words. Power more than natural. Wikipedia says witchcraft, also called witchery or spellcraft, is the use of magical faculties, most commonly for religious, divinatory, or medicinal purposes. This may take many forms depending on cultural context. Go ahead and move to the next one. If We may just catch up to that, then we'll just leave that right there for now. It is the belief in and the practice of magic that has been present since the earliest human cultures and continues to have an important religious and medicinal role in many cultures today. I told you last night, you go all over the world, I mean, especially uh, all over the eastern world or the southern hemisphere or even below the border here in Mexico, you go, you go places outside of the western world and they have a full understanding of the other realm and you, you they just do they know and oftentimes like i was in kenya and when i was in kenya I, I ended up doing a ministry there and and i ended up telling the people they needed to get rid of their witchcraft these were born again tongue talkers right over there but they were holding on to the junk and as I told them, they need to get rid of their fetishes and their things that they work their magic with and the and the, 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 the witch doctor things that they had and the ancestral shrines and all this. This bishop over there jumps up and says, see, I told you people, you need to get rid of that stuff. He said, he was surprised an American had a clue. Okay. Every culture, every tribe, every tongue. You know, you go read, you read your Bible, and you go look and see what Israel was up to. <laughs> and they would serve God and then fall back, and they'd go worship these other gods. And, and, uh, and they had their witchcraft right in the middle of it all. It's basically, in a nutshell, 
I mean, there is now. Don't get me wrong. There's a witchcraft. Uh, there's witchcraft when you do drugs because it's manipulation, and and you're opening yourself up to the spirit realm. We'll talk about some of that. But there's witchcraft from doing drugs. There's witchcraft when somebody's being seduced. There's witchcraft when somebody's being manipulated. There's witchcraft when somebody's being bullied. There's witchcraft when somebody's being intimidated. There's witchcraft when somebody is coercing someone else. Those are all witchcraft. And then there's witchcraft, and those are works of the flesh witchcraft, and demons are in it. Because let me tell you, every work of the flesh unrepented for or un, that you get undelivered, you're never delivered from, there will be a demon taking on the name of that work of the flesh that comes to help you work in the flesh because they want their character in us. All of those are demonic flesh works, but yet there are other works that are an invocation or an invitation to forces that are not the most God, high God. They are not from the Lord. They are not through the power of the Holy Spirit. They are not of the Lord, but yet there is power that's supernatural beyond human abilities. Say, Lord, I don't want any of that. I just want you. And forgive me for all that witchcraft. I ever worked in in those flesh areas forgive me Lord for any witchcraft in the drug use in the things that altered my mind even the alcohol so there's different types of witchcraft there's good witches they may mean good but the work is wicked. And they're deceived. You know how Buddhists are really, most part, nice people? I was over in Nepal, and we were the group of people, and we're walking through this place, and these Buddhist monks are running up, putting these uh, uh, blessings and, and putting these flowers on these young people we were with. I stopped it immediately. I said, give it back. I said, we don't need that. We serve another God. Because, see, that blessing is not a blessing. It's a curse. Hey, everybody ever see in Hawaii, they put a lay on you? It's a curse. I, there's a book over there. I, I can't remember the name of the author, but one of those uh, deliverance books over there, Ring is his name. The author's name is I-N-G, Richard Ng. It's a great book. But it like he was a Hawaiian. There he is. He's still alive. But the lay is representative of the goddess Pele. So when they're throwing that thing on you, you are now being tied to Pele. And as when Worley would have said, you're cursed with the curse, and so are your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. So. Say, Lord, if I've ever done any of that, <laughs> forgive me. See, there are territorial violations, things that we do. Do you know that if you're born again, I'm, I'm just going here, but listen, if you're born again, you don't need to go on a stinking pyramid in Aztec pyramid in Mexico or Peru unless you're on a mission from God because they sacrifice human beings there. Those are buildings built for the gods. Why would I want to go to that tourist thing? It's wicked. I look for the day that the hand of God sweeps them off the face of the earth. We And I have seen people get demonized from going there because it's a territorial violation. Say, Lord, if I've walked out and into territories I shouldn't have. I would say even those carpeted sewers called bars or those kind of things, okay. Y'all know they're carpeted sewers, right? Okay, anyway. Say, forgive me, Lord, <laughs> for all the unholy places I've walked and the demons I picked up in those unholy places. Take a deep breath and let them go. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let them go. Well, there's kitchen witches. They, they deal with 
elements and things in the home. There's the satanic witch that's a label for something that it, 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 Satanists do different things than normal witchcraft. And a, and a person that is certain type of witches don't even believe there's a Satan. There's an Alexandrian tradition, a Gardenian tradition. There is Celtic Wicca. They work with the elements. Let me just tell you something. Let me tell you something that's going on right now. See, these elements, Celtic Wicca, it says, goes by the elements, the ancient ones in nature. They can be healers. They work with plants, stones, flowers, trees, the elemental people, the gnomes and the fairies. Oh, gnomes and fairies exist. We cast a lot of them out of people. And if people play around long enough, they'll show up in the physical. Hear me? The reason all these things are written about and you had fairy tales is because there was a time when people were trying to engage them and appease them and the Western science hadn't took over, so they were having interaction with mankind. And guess what happens when people start playing around like that again? They're going to start showing back up. They already show up inside human beings. Okay? But listen to me about elements. Witchcraft, when they send spirits, whether invocation, now listen, some of them do those good works and a good work that they call a good work and they think they're doing a good work and the good work actually may happen, but it is going to cause a bad work to follow. Because the good work is the deception so that the trap is set so the bad work can destroy you. But there, the spirits, earth, wind, fire, and rain, elemental spirits, if somebody sent a curse after you, those demons are coming. And if you got sick, they are manipulating the earth, wind, fire, and rain in your body. Do you know you're made of dirt? Do you know you have wind? Do you know you have water? Your blood, your lymphatic system. Do you know you have fire in your nervous system? Huh? They manipulate it. Do you know what the technology is doing today? You know what these towers are doing to us? Hear me? They're manipulating the earth, wind, fire, and rain. So we are now not only facing whatever's coming from the supernatural, but now you have what is coming from the technological sorcery doing the same thing the witchcraft used to do and still does. And because demons of trauma will take advantage, the earth, wind, fire, when they manipulate us with the technology, earth, wind, fire, and rain spirits will come along with it. How many know we can be delivered? How many know there are things like God put a wall of fire around Jerusalem to protect the people so we can pray a wall of fire? Right? How many know the blood of Jesus stands against those things? But how many know that if we don't pray, it doesn't happen? So we better become diligent because, all right, the Lord gives. Now, listen, sometimes you may need discernment from the Lord. And we're not on witch hunts, okay? We're not paranoid. But the discernment of the Lord will pick out, says, because the better operators don't look like it. They don't come looking like with the cone hat on, okay? And you may need discernment for that, but I'm promising you, you don't need discernment to, to understand that they're manipulating us with technology. You just need to know what's being done and pray against it. You hear me? So we can walk healed. Then somebody said, well, how do you get away? You can't get away from it. We can't escape it. Those look, we all got phones. Even if you gave them up, you're still surrounded by towers and surrounded by low orbit satellites. And there's a web, a worldwide web they're going to connect everybody to. But in the meantime, it's making us sick. But by the grace of God, hear me. And everyone's being affected by it. Some people's bodies react more than others. 
and they pumped us full of metal in the atmosphere. You know what happens when you put metal in a microwave? Think about it. You only do it once. <laughs> it blows up with sparks, but that's what's happening. So I'm telling you this to engage you to pray. Pray for your body. Pray against that manipulation of the earth, wind, fire, and rain. I'm, I'm not going to go in there, but I mean, the Lord proved this out to me and my wife early on when all this mess started. And he showed me. And I've seen many, many people have things change in their lives when we speak re reversal of what's been done and teach them to pray and assume to people, I'm having this affliction. I'm having this. Listen, if you have a problem in your body and you already had a problem and then there's microwaves hitting you, it's going to amplify the problem. Amen. Say, Lord, you're bigger than all of it. All right. There's eclectic witches. They don't follow a particular religion or tradition. They study and learn from many different systems and use what works best for them. There's a British traditional witch. It's a mixture of Celtic and Gardenian beliefs. There is the Gardenian tradition, the Dianic tradition, the Pictish witchcraft, the hereditary witch, the Caledonian tradition, the powwow. Central Pennsylvania, it's what the Amish do. You might not know it. The Amish have got a lot of witchcraft. The place hexes do all sorts of stuff. It, it's German magic mixed with Native American stuff. There's the solitary witch. There are Strega witches. They're from Italy. A lot of them think they're doing good things. In Wiccan, the goddess is seen as Mother Earth or Mother Nature. There is a triple goddess in Wicca. It's called the Mother, the Maiden, and the Crone. Okay? Say, Lord, I renounce the Mother, the Maiden, and the crone in any form, in any culture that's come down my bloodline. Take a deep breath. Every triple goddess spirit, come out, let them go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Break the power of these things. So here's what's wild. Let's see. Somebody said, well, I've never been a witch, but what about your grandma? Your great-grandma? Your great-great-grandpa? Huh? Come on. I've never seen this stuff not here in people. Never. If anybody's willing to be delivered. But if a person in their minds decided that ain't them, they'll just stay even if they're there. The God has seen his grain, sun, and the hunt. In prehistoric times, most hunted animals were horned animals, so the God of Wicca is known as the horned one. These don't... The true Wiccans don't mess with evil. But yet they're working evil. Even in the name of good. Pentacles are their sim symptoms, are the symbols, the five-pointed star. They've got other symbols. They use color magic. Witches have things called the law of knowledge, the law of names, the law of contagion. The law of association, the law of polarity, the law of identification, the law of invocation, the law of evocation, the law of infinite data, the law of infinite universes, the law of cause and effect, the law of pragmatism. Say, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, I renounce all unholy law, and I receive your law as holy and good for me, and I command every spirit enforcing these other laws to flee me now in the name of jesus take a deep breath come on come on come on go 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 all witchcraft law i break your power in the name of yeshua let them go let them go let them go let them go come on let them go i break that vice off the heads in the name of yeshua i thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you father thank you father thank you father Thank you, Lord. Every law of cause and effect, law of pragmatism. Come on, get out. Evocation, evocation, invocations. Come on out. Thank you, Father. Say, Lord, I repent for me and my ancestors, 
for any participation in witchcraft that's been called good. I renounce all these works in the name of Jesus. I renounce all those contrary laws, all counterfeits. I forgive anyone who has prayed or worked ritual on my behalf and totally reject all demonic blessings. I break any ungodly soul ties in this area, send all souls and human spirits not of me where they belong. I call my soul and spirit back to me, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I now command all spirits that came through these practices to go. Take a deep breath. Come on. Get out. Get out. Get out. Come on. Go, 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 go. All shaman spirits, all witch doctor spirits, come on. Come on from the past. In the name of Yeshua, break your power. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Yeshua, go, 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 go. Say, Father, I give up all witchcraft tools and implements in the spirit realm, all medicine bags, all medicine staffs, all feathers, all charms, all powders, all bones, everything buried, all poppets, all dolls, voodoo dolls. I break the power of anything my ancestors did, anything I've done, anything that's been done against me, and I command these spirits to go now in the name of Jesus. All familiar spirits of witchcraft, go. Now take a breath. Let them go. Come on. Go, 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 go. Come on. Let them go. Let them go. Come on. Even from the movies, even from the cartoons. Say, Lord, forgive me for watching Disney, all other witchcraft on TV. In the movies, every form of magic I've ever seen in entertainment, for all the music, all the things I've read, anything's been unholy, drawing me to power that is not you. Forgive me. Forgive my ancestors. I forgive everybody that passed me through the fire. Forgive me if I let anybody else through the fire of unholy witchcraft occultism, worshiping other gods, and I command all these spirits to go. Take a deep breath. Come on, you who came in through the music, the witchcraft in the music, the sorcery in the music. Come on, go, 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 go. In the movies, in the cartoons, and from Disney, everything from Frozen, in the name of Yeshua, I break your power. Come on, go, go, go. Earth, wind, fire, and rain in all these areas. I bind you. I break your power. Go, 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 go. The Lord rebuke you. In Jesus' name, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Every demonic, satanic, luciferian drum beat and rhythm from the prayer circles in the name of Jesus. Come on. Say, Father, forgive me for every song I sang that invoked demons that called on other gods. I ask you to remove it from me. Remove the drum beats, the rhythms, the lyrics, the replay spirits. I command them to go. Every unholy frequency and the maintainers of those frequencies, leave me now in the name of Jesus. Come on, get out, get out. Come on, go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. Come on up and out. You can't hide. Get out of there. Get out. In Jesus' name. Say, Lord, show me any entertainer, anything I've watched or seen or listened to that I have unholy ties with. You close your eyes. If he shows you, go ahead and chop one hand and the other and break that off. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. If he shows you anybody, come on. And say, Lord, if I'm not seeing, why am I being blocked? Because I, I don't know anybody hadn't been touched here in the wrong way. Come on. Come on. Let him go. Let him go. 
mind blinding spirits, deaf, dumb spirits. Come on, get out, go in the name of Yeshua. Say, Lord, if I have any pride in me that's worried about what things look like, I ask you to forgive me. I renounce Leviathan, all the sons of pride, haughtiness, and fear of man, and I command these spirits to go in Yeshua's name. Take a deep breath. Come on, let them go. Come on, go, 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 go. Get out, pride. Get out, haughty. Get out, sons of pride. Get out, fear of man. Come on, go, 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 go. What do I look like? What do they think? I break your power. Get out. In the name of Yeshua, the Lord rebuke you. Yehovah rebukes you. Lord, I ask you to remove any fallen angels here. Any fallen angel sent to hinder this work. Any fallen angel attached to any of these bloodlines. I ask you to remove them, Lord. Remove them. That you contend with them, Lord. Remove them that your work would be done, Father. That your work would be done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Every Grigore, I break your power. The Grigores, I break your power in the name of Yeshua. Go, 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 go. Come on. Every spirit. Every fallen one. Let him go. Let him go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Black magic, dark magic, uses supernatural powers for evil and selfish purposes. It's called the left-hand path. There's a right-hand path that's supposedly the good. The black magic's malicious. Left-hand, many of these people start off right-hand, which is supposed to be good, and the devil lets things happen, and real things go to pass, and it draws them deeper and deeper, and then they think they're, that they're, they're doing it, and the demon's answering them, and then stuff doesn't work, and then they're thirsting for power, so they end up having to move over here to the obviously evil side. I say, Lord, I forgive any of my ancestors. Forgive me if I've ever done dark work. I forgive them. And I forgive anyone that's done those dark works. Black magic against me. And I break the power of black magic. Of set. Of demons called Satan. Of the left hand path. And command these spirits to go. Let your arms go if you can. Let your arms go if you can. Right, all right. Don't let don't let the enemy tie you up with pretzel, because he'll do it. <laughs> we, I'm not trying to control anybody. We just know it blocks. So, take a deep breath. Let all that go. Come on, get out of there. Yoruba go, Orisha go, Voodoo go, Hoodoo go, Root Magic go, Powwow go, Santeria go, Makumba go, Ahori go, Nordic Magic, Germanic Magic, get out, come on, Celtic Magic, Druidic Magic, Kabbalah, come on, go, 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 Islamic Magic, all magic, all the way back, all the way back up the bloodlines, every tribe, every culture, we break your power. In Yeshua's name. Come on, let him go. Ancient witchcraft. I break the power of the all fame tools as well. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. All Loas. Come out, Loas. Come out, Loas. Come out, Loas. Say, I renounce marine spirits, water spirits, mermaids, Neptune, Poseidon, all the gods and goddesses under the sea. The demons that have come forth, I command them out of me, out of my blood, now in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Let them go. Come on. Get out. Get out. All you marine spirits, you water spirits, you mermaids, you mermen. Come on. Go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Back there is a black hen sacrifice in Macumba, the ritual in Brazil, South America's Macumba. Every tongue, tribe, and nation, everybody's got their own brands. Can you go to the next page, sis? We got some symbolism, all seeing eyes on the back of your dollar bill. Alchemy, 
It means the taking of elements and creating new elements. Some of these people believe they can take things and turn it into gold. But I'm going to tell you, alchemy is being performed on us <laughs> and on, our, on the earth because they're trying to change the atmosphere, trying to change the environment, trying to change the environment in our bodies. Next page, sis, please. Amulets. So a magic charm like that little Navajo bear, the anarchy symbol. You see that anarchy symbol and the, the two legs of the A's go down below the circle. That means they made a sacrifice, human or animal. When I see it, I pray against it. Okay? That's, that's the Ankh is the Egyptian cross symbolizing some Christians think that's a cross. It's, it's, it's the Egyptian cross. It represents Osiris. Then there's something called the Blair Witch. Next one, please. Sir. Sacred Bull, the Egyptian idol. I, if I was, I wouldn't be drinking Red Bulls myself. I wouldn't drink any monster drinks either. That stuff, all that stuff junk. If I told you what was in Red Bull, it'd make you want to throw up. I'm not kidding you. There's the caduceus, the staff of Hermes, the medical staff. There is chaos symbols. There is that point within the circle, which is a male and a female. There is the quarter cross there. there that quarter circle looks like, a, like if you were looking through a scope of a rifle, earth, wind, fire, and rain. See right below it, they placed it on a cross. It's showing the elements of witchcraft on a cross of the Lord. You got the Masonic compass in the square on one side. You got the moon god. People put moon gods, sun gods out on their patios. If there's a face in the sun or a moon, it's a moon god or a sun god. You could be bringing demons with it. At the very least, it's not reflected of your relationship with the Lord. But most often, those things are made in places where those people worship the moon and the sun and the stars and the animals and other gods. So when they make something, it comes charged, if you will. Do you know what charged, charged objects do in your home? If you're really blessed seeking God, he'll show you the problem and stuff will manifest. But if you're just like, it doesn't really matter to you, It'll sit there like radiation and it'll be doing destruction. Those demons that come with it will be wrecking destruction in your home and you won't even know the cause. How many know you can't see what radiation? But it's making you sick. The phoenix, double-headed phoenix. I hate to tell you, but the American Eagle would have been a phoenix, but they knew at that time the people wouldn't receive it. And the phoenix literally represents something that burns up and then comes back to life. So that the, it is a symbol of the Illuminati that says out of ashes and out of chaos comes a new world order. The, the thing with the crosses there and the cross in the center is called, a, they call it a Jerusalem cross, but it's also called the cross of Baphomet. Okay. The center is the German iron cross. And then at the right is a dragon. I, I saw a little kid one time that was um, when I was younger and my son was younger and he was over there playing and he had a dragon on his shirt and he was acting like one. <laughs> and I said to that young man, I said, son, do you believe in God? Yeah. And I read him the book of Revelation chapter 12 about that old dragon, Satan, the dragon, the serpent of old. And I said, I got another t-shirt. Will you wear it while you're here? Yeah. I gave it to him. He changed his behavior. The, the the cross on the the one with the that one there. No, no, sis. I saw PBM give those out. They don't know. Or they do. I don't know. I can't say they don't, but there's a lot of ignorance. There's dream catchers. Go next, sis. You know, here's the thing about culture. Culture is good till it crosses a border. I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating your 
uh, dressing in your in your people's garb or 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 eating the food and those things that are good in culture. But once culture has other gods in it or does something magical or with power that is not of Jehovah, it's a problem. So a dream catcher stated to kill is to catch spirits. I mean, no, we don't need to catch them. We need to send them on down the road. So if you have a dream catcher, your spirits are coming. Amulets, those things are things to guard you. The motorcycle riders where put a bell on their bike to protect them from the road demons, they're actually bringing a curse there because it's going to do the opposite of what you're wanting it to do. I was talking, listen, I'm, I'm just going to say this here. I'm gonna, well, no, I'll say that because we're going there anyway. So there's the evil eye, the symbol of a dreadful fable curse. If you go look up the evil eye, you'll see in the Islamic world, they all believe in it. And they got eyes all over that they sell as jewelry to ward off the evil eye. I have seen, listen, there is power in wicked looks. And people that are operating in witchcraft can project things at you with wicked looks. You got the eye of Horus. It's also called the eye of Set, the all seeing eye. You see three, three parts of that right there on the bottom. All over the world. So I've, that hand with the symbol in it, I've seen in India, I've seen it in Nepal, I've seen it in Native America. How many know that all things, what happened at Babel when God scrambled everything? So the gods and goddesses that way were worshiping and engaging went, went all over the world. They just took on different names with the different cultures. So th there is a spirit called Kundalini that is works through yoga. It's a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit right and it invades a lot of god's people that are seeking instead of seeking the lord they're seeking the feelings and they get the counterfeit all right but in over there in voodoo they got a spirit that mounts so a person they have a ceremony and there's a priest or a priestess and they go into a trance and this spirit comes upon them and it's not god and they prophesy then you got places where there's things called a whirling dervish. Look it up. These guys are Muslims and they spin and they got this outfit that looks like a blouse with a dress, but it's all self-contained. And those men start spinning. And when that spirit drops down into them, they spin in such a way that no man could spin. And there are people that go, they're called ecstatic states. I promise you, the devil can make you feel good. Just because it feels good don't mean it's God. You got to know that. That's why we test every spirit. Just because it feels good, the devil comes as an angel of light. The demons do. All C and I. It also represents, look, some people, we have a gland called the pineal gland. All right? The people that practice believe the pineal gland is but it is drugs do it ritual does it witchcraft does it can open up to and it's in the middle of the forehead and it opens up where people see in the spirit realm apart from god now if the holy spirit wants to show us a vision he wants to give us a dream he wants to show us things that's good that's fine that's what we want but if you manipulate it to cause, that's why they go in sweat lodges. That's why people take mescaline. I, I mean, right? This is, they're trying to have encounters. There's something called ayahuasca. People are going down to South America to go on ayahuasca trips because you're guaranteed to see things when you take ayahuasca. But the third eye gets open and the God, listen, to just live by faith. We're not supposed to see in the spirit realm continually supposed to happen when god wants to many people have the third eye open even if they're saved that's why sometimes you got people with the third eye open and they're saved and they and they and god may work through them on one hand and the next hand it's the enemy because things need to be cut off and need to be shut off we only want the giftings that are of the holy spirit can you go next sis 
Italian horn, the Power Rangers there. That's Zeus's deal. That on the right's called a mandala. There's an Indian elephant god, part man, part human. It's a mixture. They're Nephilim. Look at the symbols in the middle. That's that's a Native American, but look at the four points. Earth, wind, fire, and rain. Over here's a mermaid. Over here is an Arabic curse. There is the peace sign, which is an upside down. That, that represented the Christians being burned upside down by Nero. Okay. Then you've got the five-pointed star pointing down. That's a Baphomet. Go God Mendes star. That's the satanic version. Okay. Of the pentagram. Then again, there's the three, there's a three-headed phoenix right there on the other one. Next, please. Swastika. That's it, it. It was adopted by the Nazis. Been around a long, long time. Earth, wind, fire, and rain. Portal to the other side. Okay, see the four points? It's a portal opening to the veil. The Nazis were occultic. They had a thing called the Thule Society. They were heavily, heavily witchcraft practitioners. They were back breeding. Listen, they were taking women, breeding them with Aryan, white hair, blue eyed, blonde haired men, blue and blonde haired, blue eyed women, because they believed they had the Nephilim bloodline and they were trying to bring it back. It's called a leaders born project. I remember. Next, please. Sun God again. Look, see all those um, in the next to the sun God. See, see those circles there? Those represent chaos and a portal to the other realm. See the beam coming through the portal? But you see, that was an unseen thing. And about 10 years ago, they started to show up on a bunch of children's toys. Symbols matter. The only people who ignore symbols are Christians. <laughs> the practitioners and the elite of the world talk through symbols. We don't have to be afraid, but I'm gonna, I'm just going to tell you how I look at things. I walked in a grocery store one time, and I was going to buy some agave nectar. And over here was one called C&K, and over here was one called Mahdave, M-A-H-D-A-V-I. And I said, you yeah, know, showed the cactus. I said, Mahdave. I wonder what that is. I pull the phone out. I look it up. It says another name for the Hindu god Vishnu. I said, I think I'll take the C&K. Why? Why would I want that? I don't want other gods back in my house. I belong to the only true God, the most high God. Why would I want any of that stuff? Look at that with the tongue. You see all these people on Facebook sticking their tongues out? You look at people in their family pictures and they all got their tongue hanging out and all that? Well, their Polynesian goddesses did all that. They had a, a god up in the far northwest that did all that. It's wicked. Your tongue's for talking. Hmm? Not for, it's supposed to stay in your mouth. See that totem pole? I've been two places in my life where I saw people that spent so much time with their gods they look like that. Their faces look like that. One was Nepal, and the other was Taos, New Mexico. Because they spend time out there fasting and praying with their God. You know, you become one with the ones you hang with. Neptune's fork, unicorn, that then yin and yang, those are the symbols up at the top and the bottom. And the thing there at the bottom in the middle, if they, back when I was younger, there's a show called Karate Kid, and they all had that thing, and Karate Kid's getting whooped. I see, I wouldn't watch that anymore, but I did then. He's getting whipped by by a guy over there in Guam, Guam, Okinawa, and he's getting whipped, and all the people get up and they start doing this, and all of a sudden everything changes, and he whips the bully. You know what that's for? To call up their gods. It's to call up their God. Say, Lord, forgive me for all the things I ever watched that weren't good for me. Can you go to the next one, sis? That is the website where a lot of that symbolism came from, if anybody's interested in it. There, 
where the symbolism. There's others. You can just look up demonic symbolism, other, but and, and I haven't checked that one in a while, but that's where I got that. Witchcraft can be in involved in fight for territory, church splits, divorce, can cause people to control who normally don't. Say, Lord, if I've ever done anything or my ancestors did anything to open the third eye, I want it closed. I only want to see in the spirit realm what you show me. Lord, if I have any giftings that are not from you, I renounce them now in Jesus' name. I renounce all false prophecy, counterfeit tongues, clairvoyance, any gifting that is from the dark side that mimics the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I renounce them. I break soul ties with anybody that imparted them to me. And I command all these spirits to go in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Come on out. Come on, all counterfeit giftings. Let them go. Go, 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 go. Lose some, lose some. Go, 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 go. In the name of Yeshua, false and counterfeit prophecies, I break your power. Say, Father, if I ever received a prophecy and didn't test it, and I received it as if it was from you, when it wasn't, I repent, I forgive who gave it, and I now renounce it and command these spirits to go. Come on out of them. Come on. Go, 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 go. Witchcraft prophecy, counterfeit prophecy. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Come on. Go, 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 go. We break the enforcers. We break the power of the enforcers of these words that are not the words of the Lord. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. We break all unholy soul ties in this area. In Yeshua's name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Across the room, people getting delivered there. That's how. Listen, we haven't. The Bible tells us what to do. We're not to be judgmental. We're not to be critical. We're not to be in a place where we can't receive from God. But yet every prophetic word is supposed to be tested. And if you don't, and it's a flesh word, it doesn't have to be an actual witch, but if it's a human operating in the flesh saying, thus saith the Lord, and you receive that, and it wasn't from God, it becomes like witchcraft. Because it's flesh. Witchcraft is a sin of the flesh. Take another deep breath. Let all of it go. Come on. Go, 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 go. Every lying prophetic word, we break your power. In the name of Yeshua, come on, go, 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 go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And I'll tell you something for people that don't want to behave. There was a, a battle going on. And, and, and actually, Hezekiah joined with Ahab of all people. A good king joined Ahab, Jezebel's husband, to do battle. And there was, uh, before the council of the Lord, a spirit steps up. And because these people didn't want truth, this spirit tells God in his council, I'll become a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. God sent that spirit because they didn't want the truth. And those prophets went down there and they said, yeah, y'all go on and fight him. You're going to get a great victory. While the prophet of God is going, don't do it. And they haven't even said, I hate that guy. He never tells me. <laughs> no. <laughs> huh? One day soon, the word says God's going to send a great delusion because men don't want the truth. It's kind of like when God keeps trying to tell us not to do something, and eventually we, we just keep ignoring him. We get a seared conscience, and we just go on thinking we're okay, and we're not, and we're walking into destruction. And it's not because he didn't love us, and it's not because he didn't try. It's because he just said, well, if you don't want to listen to me, you can have what you want. I mean, no, the whole world's about to get that. 
Say, Lord, let, let it not be me. Say, Lord, I want every good and perfect gift that comes down from the Father of lights. I want the gifts of the Holy Spirit to work through me to build your body for your glory and your glory alone. But I renounce every other gift that's not of you. Take another deep breath and be healed of that. Come on, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Next one, please. Toys, movies, etc. You see Wonder Woman? You ever heard of Diana of Ephesus? <laughs> Artemis? That's who she is. Next one, sis. Look at these guys. I mean, th these are, have you ever walked down the Walmart toy aisle? It's wicked. I walk down there, I feel like I'm walking like this because I sense the spirits. In there. I'm not afraid to walk down there, but I sense the witchcraft. I know what's in there. And you got all these mixture beings. You got one of these guys, this one here is Prometheus. He's a, a god of fire. You got, can you go to the next one? Or, thank you. Look at these little cuties. <laughs> Even things like my little ponies, the dragons, the hydras, the unicorn. They make stuff cute. Hey, do you remember when I was a kid? I mean, a lot of you weren't there when I was a kid. Some of you were there around when I was a kid, but most of you weren't. But when, when I was a young man, vampires were the booger men, and most women wouldn't watch a vampire show. And then they made them romantic. Hmm? They made them romantic. And guess what? It's really like a Nephilim. You become one with a supernatural being, and now you have an immortality. That's what's coming. They're just setting the stage. So all these people that watch Twilight, they got demons. Every single one of them. And oftentimes they got raped. And it begins with them sitting on your chest, and they call it sleep paralysis. And if it's not dealt with, they're going to take it further. And say, Lord, forgive me for everything I watched. Even about vampires, supernatural beings that offered an immortality that's not of the Lord. Thank you, Father. One more, sis. Another one, please. Can you go back? You'll notice that stuff like this, when you go to check out at the Walmart, they got all this stuff stacked up in the front so the kids will want them on their way out. And the Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh's and all those wicked things. Next one, please. That was a movie that came out a while back called Avatar. Mixture people. You know, that looks bizarre. You know why they're telegraphing that? It happened before. And our Lord Yeshua says it's going to be like the days of Noah when he comes back. All this stuff happened before. It's coming. We're dealing with the demons of these things. They're, they're spirits. But they're going to create bodies, and they're already creating bodies for them to inhabit again. Next one, please. All of these guys, the Avengers, same thing. They're preparing the children to be mixed. All of them are heroes, men of renown, they call them. That's what the Bible called the Nephilim. <laughs> they're, every one of them is a mixture. One of them is right there is Thor. Thor is Odin's son. Odin had relations with an earth woman. Odin was the chief god of the Nordic pantheon. He has sex, has a wife, has a child. His name is Thor. He is the same thing as Hercules. You had Zeus and a woman, and you got Hercules. The Bible says the sons of God took the daughters of men for wives, and there were giants in the land. Those are merely the stories of what happened pre-flood. And it happened again afterwards. Next, please. And now we're dealing with things like this, a mixture of humans, intelligent things, and humans and machines, transformers, right? AI. 
toys. See, it's all preparation. Say, Father, I want nothing to do with any of that. And if there's anything anywhere I need to get rid of, show me what it is, and I'll get rid of it. And if you're a parent in here and you were ignorant at one time and you led your children through all that, and you gave them, say, Father, forgive me for that. And I ask you to remove the damage I did from my own children in Jesus' name. How many know you can't undo what you didn't know? But you can pray and God can do things. Amen. And he can heal and he can wake them up. I want to talk about tattoos. Can you go to the next one? Look, I personally believe the Lord when he said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And sin is the transgression of the law, and he's put his law on my heart. So it can't be abolished and on your heart at the same time. God's moral laws are, and anybody that thinks his moral laws are done away with is now lawless. And the fruit of our nation is lawlessness. And the fruit of most of his people is lawlessness. We, we don't. Our, our obedience is a reflection of our righteousness that's been granted by our salvation. But if I'm truly saved, I should want to behave because his law is on my heart and I have a good father, right? And we all struggle and we're all in a battle and there's mercy and there's grace. But let me tell you something, even for people, and the law is done away with blah, blah, blah. Leviticus 19, 28. And I tell him, and, and then here's what he says. And this is right in the middle of all that. And I would ask people, I say, is witchcraft okay? Oh, no. Well, this is right in the middle of all the witchcraft. Admonitions. Don't do it. I won't suffer a witch to live. Don't go to the soothsayer. It's about tattoos. And there's no condemnation to anybody here. I'm just, I just, you've got to know that if you want to be free, you're going to have to deal with this. And quit doing it. Leviticus 19.28 in the Amplified says, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print or tattoo any marks upon you, for I am the Lord. Pretty straightforward. You shall not tattoo any marks on you. If you're looking for ways to please the Lord, you stay away from that. I would tell people, I said, who, listen, when it comes to this, because hyper grace and people that are ignorant of things have no clue about how demons come in. And if you do what we do here, you cast thousands of demons out of people. And I have a saying that if they're not there, they don't come out. <laughs> but if they come out, it means they were there. You get it? I said it the other day. If when I was running with the, in the enemy's camp, if I would have gone that, I'd have them all over me. So I'm not judging anybody, but I want to tell people how to get free. And we don't want to leave stumbling blocks. Okay, so God said not to do this. Now, Jesus comes along. He fulfills the law. You think he's going to tell you to break his law? Will he forgive you? Well, praise God he does. But could you see him for one minute sitting in a chair and say, give me one of them cool ones? Come on. Who's our pattern? He's the pattern. There's a lot of things that you can do and he's still going to love you, but it doesn't mean you're not going to get demonized and it doesn't mean it's not going to cause you problems. And so, so when there is something put on you, and even if you do it for what you perceive to be good, it's going to create the opposite of what you intended it to do. I had a, a young woman one time I was teaching a group. And, and, it, and it was a structured teaching. We were going through different areas of deliverance and healing and soul ties and all those things. And somebody asked the question. I wasn't going there. But I said, well, you asked. <laughs> so here we went. And I began to talk about that. And after I got through talking, there was a line. People were sitting there crying. And this girl comes up to me, and she's got sandals on. And she points down to her little toe, and it's got what looked like a ribbon on her toe. And she said, I put that on my toe six years ago to remind me to pray every day, and I haven't been able to pray in six years. Because it was a work of the flesh. And what you put on there, so if people, so another woman, while we were in Africa, 
And she was a wonderful woman of God. Loved Jesus much as anybody I ever met. Spirit filled people, helped people. I mean, everything you want to see in a person. Just a lovely individual. And she's got some tattoos. And she sat down across the table from me. And she starts saying, well, I got this one. The Lord led me to get this one in this year. And then this one over here in this year. And this one. Else. And they were all scriptures or something about the word. And I'm sitting there praying in the spirit because we love her. She's a friend. She's a human. We don't want to hurt her. But how are we going to address this, Lord? And then I just, it came to me what to say. And I said, I've just come to find out. That I said, if the Lord is our pattern and he wouldn't do it, then we don't need to do it either. And she went off. You know, I didn't say that. But 10 minutes later, she's sitting beside me crying. Go, what do we do about it? Hmm? What do we do about it? I said, we do what we do for everything else. We say, forgive me, Lord. We break the curses. We cast the demons out. We break the soul ties. And we then walk in freedom. And we don't do it anymore. And if anybody asks you about it, you tell them why you shouldn't have done it. You're going to get a new body one day anyway. Yes, ma'am. I, Jesus never sat down in a tattoo chair and got him put. I don't know how that how that's going to work spiritually. It, it it is a mark that perhaps God put on him, but it's not ink. I can promise you that, because he would never defile his temple. Yeah, he would never defile his temple. So when when it's described as that, it's just a mark, and and it's being on, it's on his thigh for a reason. The Lord would never, and, and now, so experientially, we see people with them. If they'll repent, we, we, they repent, we confess it is sin, we broke your law, Lord. Sin is breaking his law. So we say, Lord, I'm sorry for that. We break the curses, we, the demons come out. If you have a grim reaper, you're going to have a grim reaper. If you've got a cross or a scripture, it's antichrist. Because the Lord would never tell you to do it. He's not going to lead you into something that he would never do. So you'll get an antichrist spirit. So you were led by an, a good thought that you wanted to do something to give glory to God. But it's a wrong thought. Because just because you felt it was good doesn't mean it was righteous. No condemnation to anybody. But let's get free. now. You know what all these people have in common? They serve different gods. It is a trait of, of the pagan world, of the heathen world, of those that don't serve the most high God. All the piercings and the things through the nose and all those things. The enemy hates men made in the image of God and he wants to defile them and defile the bodies of the men and women of, of, of the world. Our walk with the Lord is a holy walk. It's just like anything else. If I've done it, I just repent it and get the stuff out. First time I ever did it, I prayed with a guy who anointed every one of them with oil and cast. And listen, that man had put his sister and him got in a fight. She ran out. This was like three or four years before I prayed for him. She ran out mad, drove down the road, and got killed in a wreck. He tattooed her name and a thing all the way around his arm. You know, he was stuck in perpetual mourning. He put, when you do that, you tattoo somebody else's name. Listen, people tattoo the names of somebody they want to stay close to. They most often get driven away from them. Because it's, gonna, it's a flesh work. It does the opposite of your intention. And so that man had literally had a gravestone on his arm. And then he had other things like Grim Reapers and other things. And when I prayed for him, we cast the demons. He said, I felt them leave out of every spot they were at. Now, most of the time, people just they might have come out their breath. But it was tangible to him out of every location. And he got free. So say, if you will, 
Lord, I want to be like you. Set apart for your purpose. You know, one of the things I've often do when I'm researching is go look for the truth of what people say. Like, see, if we were going to research yoga, people think you can have Christian yoga. Uh -huh. You can. It means yoked up with the gods. It's not yoked up with Yahweh. It means yoked up with the gods. And all the moves are conjuring moves that have been designed to invoke those demons to come who they call their gods for all these thousands of years. You can't get away from that, and you can't Christianize it. Listen, I tried to pray over a cursed rock, anoint it with oil, like it killed me and my wife one year <laughs> from Hawaii because I thought I'm spirit-filled. Well, that stuff was dedicated to Pele. <laughs> it was like the sin of Achan. Wasn't mine to take in the first place, and then I took it. My prayer didn't fix it. It's like praying over a totem pole. We brought it home from Hawaii, and we had a tractor breakdown in the first week, a car breakdown in the first week. I wrecked a four-wheeler in the fourth, fourth week. In the first week, another car broke down, and we had the worst year financially of our lives until the Lord showed me what it was. And I looked on. My wife heard, send it back from where it came. I looked online. You know, there's thousands of people sending rocks back to Hawaii. But I asked the Lord, because we're not suspicious, why? He said, it's the sin of Achan. Well, if you know who Achan was, they went into Jericho, and God said, it is cursed stuff in there. Don't take any of it. The man took it and brought us in the whole camp. The Hawaiians have dedicated their land to Pele. You go take one of their rocks, God honors what they did. So the demons come with it. <laughs> So the tattoo masters, which really their origins are the foreign countries, will all tell you that it is a yoking with gods and it's spiritual. And because it's making a blood, now I'm saying it, it's making a blood covenant with whoever does the cutting. Just like you had sex with them. So the spirits interchange between the people. And you get an unholy soul tie with the tattoo artist. Say, Lord, I don't want any of that. Say, Father, if I did that, any of my, and, and then by the way, if God gave you a fearfully and wonderfully made body, what are we doing marring it? It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's like we put graffiti on, on some, a work of beauty. Huh? Right? There's something, if we're having to do something like that, it means we're not accepting what we are, right? We're not accepting what is. Amen? Say, Lord, forgive me. And I forgive any of my ancestors that did any of this and brought these demons into my bloodline. I forgive them. I forgive me. I break every ungodly soul tie that's been formed with any of these people in the name of Jesus. And I agree that every spirit my brother calls out and all like spirits have to go in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Come on. Pagan, heathen, bondage, addiction, perversion, infirmity, antichrist, unclean, idolatry, witchcrafts, sorcery, slavery, death, lust, pride, vanity, false comforters, Come on, go, 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 go. Any, any, any demons that took on the names, any grim reapers, any thors, any thunderbirds, any skeletons, all death spirits in the name of Jesus, anything linking them to other human beings, it's unholy. I break your power. Anything meant to be a work of the, that meant to be spiritual, but is a work of the flesh. We break your power, every antichrist spirit and by every liar that lied to him in the first place. It said it was okay. That false sense of grace. I break your power. That says grace, uh, Cover, listen, grace helps us not to sin. Grace helps us not to sin. It's God's power to accomplish his will in our lives. Not, not so we can go sin. Forgive us, Lord. We break the power of this darkness in the name of Jesus. Come on, go, 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 go. Every antichrist spirit, every counterfeit spirit. Come on, go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And let's just do this. Say, Lord, I repent for every blood covenant I made through sexual activity, through tattoos, even in the medical realm, anything done where blood was let from my body or I caused others to shed blood. And I break every curse that came through this. I ask you to show me any face I might need to see to break these blood covenants in Jesus' name. Now, if he shows you a face, take a hand and chop. Everything he shows you, just take a hand and chop. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You're holy, Lord. You're merciful, Lord. You're kind, Lord. You're mighty in battle. Thank you, Father. And don't, listen, if we're binding the devil and you see something, don't shake it off. <laughs> we're asking God, we're bound Satan, and we're asking God to show us things, so don't intellectually dismiss something. Just deal with it. Just deal with it. He's been kind enough to show us so that we can get rid of junk and we can get healed. If you're getting a wrestling match about the what ifs, well, then you get to keep whatever he showed you that he wanted to get rid of for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Every spirit that came in through the blood covenants now come out now in the name of Jesus. Come on, go, 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 go. Blood covenants. God covenants, not holy sex, occultic sex, in the name of Jesus, all ritual, in the name of Yeshua, I break your power. I pull them off of every demonic, satanic, Luciferian altar, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, every covenant's from shedding of blood. Come on, go, 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 in any way, shape, and form, even medical field, even through surgeries, in the name of Yeshua. Come on, go, 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 every spirit that transferred, every soul tie be broken, foreign souls go where you belong. Their souls come back to them. We break demonic bridges between them and the people in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're going to do one more thing. It's essential oils. Okay. And the next one. And the next one. Okay. Potions. A potion is a magical medicine, a drug in a liquid form. In mythology and literature, a potion is usually made by a magician, a dragon, a fairy, or a witch. It has magical properties. It can be used for various motives, including healing, bewitching, or poisoning of a people. Love potions were used to cause people to fall in love with people or become deeply infatuated. Sleeping potion to come to cause long-term or eternal sleep. Elixirs to heal, cure wounds and maladies. Listen, all essential oils are not bad, so hear me. Some are witchcraft. I'm going to name two specifically. You pray over the others. There's some decent ones from Christian sources. There's one called Young's Living Oil. It's perhaps the worst. And one of the things I want to tell you is, is in a nutshell, if you take an oil and you give it a spiritual quality, it became a potion. So if they got an oil, that one says abundance, supposed to make you rich. They got one. They got them to give you peace, and they got them to give you joy, and they got them to give you hope. It's witchcraft. Just that by itself. It's kind of like Freemasonry. I could tell you a thousand things wrong with free Freemasonry, but right there at the top, it says if you live by the square and the compass, you can go see the great architect of the universe. So they're offering a salvation through works. Hmm? That's enough. Not to mention all the other junk. Hmm? So in this, you're taking spiritual qualities, the manufacturer, and selling it to do that. It's no different than going to the market witch and the bone lady and getting something from them. That's on the top one. Then... Hmm. 
then you got all this other stuff like they teach you how to open chakra points which is buddhism and hinduism you got this one called a bolt abundance they got one called dream dream catcher chakra points are places up and down your backbone that are openings to the spirit realm and everywhere they get open you get demons and they they got things called rain drop techniques where they drop the deal to invoke the gods on people's backs they went to buddhist tibetan witchcraft practitioners and medicine men to get their techniques We cast many a demon out of people for using those oils. And doTERRA is another one. The Mormon. They give spiritual qualities to the oils. And then we were at a ministry, and the woman that runs the ministry shared with us that, now look, I, we started casting demons out just on that information. Because somebody asked me to research it. I looked at it, and as soon as I seen the spiritual qualities given to the oils, I knew we have a problem here before any of the other research came. Because what I do is when I go research, so I looked at what the Christians said about it, I looked up essential oils and witchcraft, and the witches got them in all their stores, and they really love Young's Living Oil. Right? If they like it, should it should tell us something's wrong. And then I went to Young's Living Oil themselves and saw what they said about all those things. So now you have the Christian witness, you got the witch witness, and you got their witness. And then I knew. And they began to take people through repentance and saw major deliverance. And the first guy that asked me about it, when that his, his mother-in-law bought $10,000 worth of these oils because she seen the tribulation coming and knew there might not be medicine. So then all of a sudden, he asked me about it, and I, and I did the research. I called him back. I said, I wouldn't touch it. He goes, what if it works? I said, well, the witch doctor works. The medicine man works. The shaman works. You just get fixed to the one thing and get a boatload of demons to go with it, to, to add on to, because something else is coming later. Well, that stuff works. And so then they had a son, and all of a sudden he started developing. He was a teenager. He's a spirit-filled young man of God, about 15 years old. And he all of a sudden had an ailment in his stomach. Nobody could explain what was wrong. And so they said, would you minister to him? So I come and talk to the boy. And I said, well, look, let's just ask God what, what this is. So let's ask the Lord, what's the problem here? And he says, I see all these bottles of oil. <laughs> so I said, well, let's forgive your grandmother. And forgive your mother. And break this curse. He did, and I cast the demon out. The pain went away. It went away. So the grandmother, who spent $10,000 for the oil, she didn't want Now, I went to his mom. I'm going to go say, so I'll go to his mom. I said, you need to repent too. Now, I've taken this woman through deliverance. You know, we, we had a relationship with her, their whole family. And I said, you need to repent, Give me, letting those oils be put on them. She says, what if I don't feel convicted? I said, well, let's do it like this. Father, if I sin there, forgive me. And she went, Father, if I sin there, forgive me. <laughs> the demon's coming out. I said, well, if it wasn't there, it wouldn't come out now, would it? So then the grandmother didn't want to get rid of them. Then the grandmother kept this little boy that was her granddaughter, her grandboy, right? of the youngest one and about two months later he starts growling well, when he starts growling i told her i said well it's those oils well i got rid of the oil cast the demon out of the sun out of the ground boy it's real the enemy's a trickster you know because what happened children of god is that people are understanding problems in the medical field and 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 the pharmacia that's going on. So so here's some things that are natural and seemed right and seemed better. And so the enemy got all involved in that and sent the wrong kinds. Hmm. So there's nothing any more than it's wrong to you know or you're cursing yourself to take aspirin or whatever. There are some things that it could help you physically, but you don't want it from cursed sources. Say, Father, if I've used any of these. Or any cursed things to try to get well 
and even bypassed repentance, I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. And I command any witchcraft that came through the oils to go. If somebody applied any of these oils to me in the name of Jesus, I break these curses in Jesus' name. I declare in Jesus' name before the court of heaven in the presence of Almighty God, his holy angels, all supernatural beings, and any human witness that I repent for and renounce the sin of my ancestors and my own sins. I break all the curses brought on them and me by their sins, their rites, their ceremonies, that that's been spoken against them or me. I break the curses. I call them null and void. They're broken off of me and my bloodline, off the crowns of our head, off of all items and my possessions and my property. I renounce and break all ungodly agreements, contracts, vows, oaths, promises, pacts, blood oaths, blood pacts, and soul ties. I turn and renounce the denial by any of my ancestors of the gospel of Jesus Christ and Jesus' work on the cross of Calvary. I turn from and renounce Satan, the demons, fallen angels, all of their works affecting me in Jesus' name. I renounce witchcraft, occult practices, games, board and card games, video games, astral projection, essential oils, santeria, voodoo, pagan ceremonies, Masonic Lodge, false religions, Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Islam, cults, gangs, mind control, insanity. I renounce the cutting of the flesh, the pride that led to my ancestors doing this. I renounce the third eye in the center of the forehead, the spirit of divination, false spiritual insight, all false light, dark light. I break and renounce and reject all agreement previously given by myself or my ancestors to be deceived by evil spirits. I renounce the witchcraft rituals, the talking to the dead, the necromancy, the familiar spirits, every spirit of my ancestors, all songs calling spirits in. I will listen to no other spirit than the spirit of the Lord. I renounce fighting, aggression, violence, every martial arts, and in, in chi, chi, ki. I renounce all yoga, all mind-blanking practices. I command all these spirits to go now in the name of Jesus. Come on, go, 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 go. Any oils that were put on them by anybody too. Come on, go, 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 go. I break your power. All witchcraft, all sorcery, all divination, spirit of divination. Go, 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 go. Counterfeit spirits, familiar spirits. Let them go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Go ahead and stand up and we'll we'll pray and be dismissed if you would. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I pray, ask you for ongoing deliverance, even while I'm asleep, and perpetual deliverance wherever I need it, all the days of my life. I give you permission to lead me into truth. Take me away from deception and to set me apart. Help me to live holy because I'm thankful and to give you glory. I ask you, Lord, to fill every gap where the enemy is left. Pour in the oil. Pour in the wine. Heal me. Heal my soul. Heal my body. Heal my spirit. In Jesus' name, 
Take a deep breath. Bless them, Lord. I pray for their sleep. I bless them tonight. I thank you for your goodness to us in the land of the living. And I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you do what only you can do in all of our lives. In Jesus' name. I pray, Father, for refreshing. And I pray that everyone's supposed to be here in the morning, conquers the flesh, and gets up and comes. In Jesus' name.